Hi, my name is Ahmad Aref, and I'm an ophthalmologist specializing in cataract and glaucoma surgery in Chicago. In this video, I'll be talking about a condition that everyone will develop as long as they live long enough, and that's cataracts. Cataracts are actually the most common cause of blindness worldwide. Fortunately, cataracts are a reversible cause of blindness, and modern techniques and technologies have standardized the management of this condition, leading to extremely successful outcomes in most cases. By the way, I'll have more videos to come covering a range of different eye conditions, so if you'd like to stay up to date, make sure to subscribe to this channel. We are all born with a lens inside of our eyes, just like an eyeglass lens. And when we're first born, that lens is nice and clear and focuses light rays onto the back of our eyes to transmit images of objects in front of us back to our brains. Some of us, including myself, need a little bit of help with eyeglasses or contact lenses. As we all age, the eye's natural lens starts to opacify or become cloudy, and that's what we call a cataract. The result is that images no longer focus properly onto the back of our eyes, even with the new eyeglass prescription. Some of the first symptoms of a cataract are glare, especially when driving at night with oncoming headlights. Other symptoms include needing more light to read or just a general haze to one's vision. Here you can see examination of the eye with a slit lamp biomicroscope, which is a standard part of the ophthalmologist's eye exam. This example shows a clear, healthy, natural lens behind the patient's pupil. This patient's lens focuses light perfectly onto the back of the eye. For comparison here, you can see examination of a patient that's suffering from a cataract. The once clear lens has now turned a yellowish, brownish color and is affecting the ability of light to focus onto a single point in the back of the eye. This patient is experiencing all the typical symptoms of a cataract and will be having surgery soon to help and improve his vision. In this example, we see a young patient that suffered a cataract due to a childhood eye injury. You can appreciate the different appearance of this severe form of cataract. Special techniques and tools will be required for treatment. The classic impressionist artist Claude Monet experienced cataracts later on in his life, and he admitted that these cataracts had an effect on his paintings. He described his vision as appearing muddy at that time, leading to an inability to distinguish between colors and causing his later works to appear more dark. Here you can appreciate the intensity of Monet's Harmonie Rosewater Lilies, painted in the year 1900, before the onset of his cataracts. We can compare this with the darker tones and colors in Monet's Japanese footbridge, painted in 1920 when he was suffering severe visual impairments from cataracts. Monet underwent cataract surgery in 1923. His vision improved substantially, but also led him to destroy many of his paintings from just before the surgery due to dissatisfaction with their color tones and accuracy. The only treatment we have for cataracts is cataract surgery where the eye's natural lens is removed. Now, if all we did was remove the eye's natural lens, then most people would require a very high eyeglass prescription after surgery. That's why standard technique involves removal of the cataract and implantation of a clear artificial lens, what we call an intraocular lens, or an IOL. Modern day IOLs can be implanted through a very small two to three millimeter incision in the outermost layer of the eye the cornea. Monofocal types of IOLs focus incoming light rays from a single point in front of the eye. These lenses can also often correct the need for glasses or contact lenses, but again, only for light coming from a single point. So, with monofocal IOLs, patients will have to choose among having clarity at distance, some intermediate range, or at near. Glasses or contacts would be required for the other distances. Monofocal IOLs are typically covered under insurance plans in the United States. Here you can see a monofocal intraocular lens. This lens is made of acrylic. The central part of the intraocular lens is called the optic. The arms on either side are called the haptics, which help to keep the IOL in stable position inside the eye. Multifocal IOLs split incoming light rays coming from different distances in front of the eye. In this way, this type of IOL can provide some clarity at distance, intermediate range, as well as near, 
and decrease the need for glasses or contacts at all of these distances. The trade-off with multifocal IOLs is that the splitting of light rays can sometimes cause glare or halo symptoms in some patients. Enhanced depth of focus, or EDOF IOLs, extend light rays in the intermediate zone and can thereby provide some clarity at distance as well as at intermediate ranges like for computer vision. Glasses are sometimes required for reading fine print. The advantage of the EDOF IOLs is that they don't split light rays the same way that multifocal IOLs do, so typically aren't associated with the same glare or halo symptoms, but they still extend vision beyond that of a monofocal IOL. EDOF and multifocal IOLs are typically not covered by insurance plans in the United States, so these IOLs would require an out-of-pocket cost from patients. Here you can see an extended depth of focus intraocular lens, or an EDOF lens. This lens is also made of acrylic, but centrally there in the optic, you can appreciate a central transition element, which is a slightly raised part of the IOL that helps to stretch light rays to allow for intermediate vision in addition to distance vision with this IOL. Cataract surgery is a standardized procedure, usually done under intravenous sedation and with a local anesthetic. The patient lies flat and the surgeon cleans around the eye with an antiseptic solution and then places a sterile paper drape over the eye and then a spring between the eyelids to keep the eye open. Some patients fall asleep, which is fine, while others are somewhat alert and can hear some of the sounds of the operating room. The surgeon uses an operating microscope with bright lights to perform the procedure. A small two to three millimeter incision is made in the outermost layer of the eye. And then this device is used to deliver ultrasound energy inside the eye to break the cataract up into tiny pieces, which are then removed with a miniature vacuum. The use of ultrasound to break up a cataract is termed phaco emulsification or phaco. After the phaco, an IOL is implanted and the surgery is completed. Most, but not all cases of cataract surgery do not require any stitches. After surgery, the sterile drapes are removed and an eye patch or clear shield are taped over the eye. After the surgery, eye drops are often prescribed to help control inflammation and decrease risk for infection. Patients are seen in the office usually the day after the surgery to check eye pressure and look for any signs of infection. And then the final outcome is typically judged at about four weeks after surgery. In the United States, most surgeons perform cataract surgery one eye at a time, spaced out by a few weeks or so. This patient had cataract surgery performed one week prior to this exam. You can see the difference now with the IOL sitting behind the pupil. Things look nice and clear and the patient's vision has improved. The IOL is well centered behind the pupil and is reflecting light that's coming off of the slit lamp. This patient is also one week out from cataract surgery. His IOL is nicely centered and you can also see a stitch there on the left hand side. This patient required a stitch because his surgery was combined with a glaucoma operation. Cataract surgery is one of the safest procedures in all of medicine. But no surgeries without risk. Even with our most advanced technologies to measure the eye's shape and length before the surgery, and even with our most sophisticated IOLs, there's still a chance that glasses or contacts could be required after the procedure. Another risk to consider is something called posterior capsule opacification, or PCO. The eye's natural lens is contained within a supportive capsule, which sometimes we call a capsular bag. Surgeons aim to keep that capsular bag intact during the cataract surgery, and it allows for support of the new IOL. Sometimes after otherwise uncomplicated cataract surgery, cells can grow in front of that capsular bag, causing a haze to one's vision. And sometimes it can feel like the cataract has come back, even though it hasn't. Fortunately, this condition has a relatively safe treatment with an office-based laser technique. Another risk to cataract surgery occurs if the eye's capsular bag is disturbed or broken during the procedure. That's uncommon, but certain individuals may be at higher risk for that complication. 
If an individual has had a prior eye injury or has a condition called pseudo exfoliation syndrome, which I'll be talking about in a future video, then they may be at higher risk. If the capsular bag is broken during the procedure, an IOL may still be placed, but in a slightly different position in the eye. And sometimes patients with this issue are not candidates for multifocal or EDOF IOLs. If the capsular bag is disturbed and the surgeon judges that it's not safe to proceed with implantation of the IOL at that time, then sometimes a second operation may be required. Other risks to cataract surgery include high eye pressure afterwards, retinal detachment, corneal swelling, or a droopy eyelid. There's even a risk of vision-threatening eye infection. These issues are all uncommon, but they are risks to the procedure. There are other risks as well that go beyond the scope of this video, but I'll leave that to a discussion between you and your surgeon. At the end of the day, the patient and the surgeon have to decide together whether the benefits of cataract surgery outweigh the risks, keeping in mind that a cataract will never go away on its own, but the surgery remains elective in nature. Cataract surgery is really a modern marvel, and standardized techniques have revolutionized the procedure. In most cases, vision improves dramatically, allowing one to get back to normal daily life activities. Thank you for your attention.